Fifth Agony Aunt. I'm a newly qualified teacher. My students seem to find it difficult to remember the difference between the three central tendencies, mean, mode and median. How do other people manage to get them to remember? Thanks, Laura Hughes. How about starting with fashion? This is Carnaby Street in London, a place synonymous with 60s fashion. We're here to introduce a programme about the three averages, mode, median and mean. We all know that teenagers are really interested in fashion and fashion only just offers such a wealth of statistics that they can explore that has real meaning. Just to ask the question, like, what's the most fashionable colour? Or, what are the most common shoes worn by teenagers? They can acquire the concept of mode, that's most modern or most popular. We visit Viner's School in Hillingdon to see how Simi Shah uses fashion in the teaching of one of the averages, the mode, for her year nine class. What I'd like you to do is take a look at the board. You've got pictures of trainers on there. And what I would want you to do is construct a tally chart. And I want you to use that tally chart to identify what the most common colour of trainer is. OK, look at the trainer and look at its main colour. Don't worry about any stripes. How um, would I construct a tally chart? Which way does the column go? Would you um, do it going down the side? OK. Very good, yes. So what would I have? Simi establishes the design of the tally chart that will lead to finding the mode. So you need two columns. The first column will be your colour and the second column will be your tally. Yeah? Well, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do that. You've got to remember that they typically only attained maybe not even a level four at the end of year mm. six. So they struggle when you're trying to introduce more than sort of two or three concepts in a lesson. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop you there. What is the modal color of these trainers? White. White, how many white ones are there? Six. Six. Now, as I was walking <coughs> around, I noticed that some people had got the same number of white and I think the same number um, of blue as well. How many blue um, trainers did you have? Cara? Five. You had five. All right. What about somebody else? Simi went on to collect data from all the groups. Not all of the children had the same counts. Why do you think we got those differences in count? I only got one silver. I didn't get two. Because, so some of them got silver on and you'd think that they might be blue. So some of you may have classified it differently, okay. If you got a count where two were the same, two colours were the same, okay. We've had the word mode as the most common, okay. Does anybody know a word that we might use to suggest that there were two modes? Um, Lizzie? Is it bi? Bi, yes, bi, as in biannual or bi-weekly. If you put it in front of the <coughs> word mode, you get bimodal. Simi was tackling the colour of trainers. But you could also consider which is the most popular type of shoe. For example, do most people wear trainers? And how about shoe sizes? Shoe sizes are really great for distinguishing between the mode, median and the mean. If you take the shoe sizes and you find the mean, sometimes you arrive at a figure like, say, 6.25, which is meaningless because there isn't a shoe size at 6.25. And this means that you can then have a discussion about that in the classroom. In clothes and shoes, you've got everything you need. You've got colour, you've got style, you've got jean size, dress size and size ratios. Now, we're about to meet Claire Barker, who owns a clothes shop, uh, which is just off Carnaby Street in Kingley Court. Really nice to meet you. Thank you for inviting us into your shop um, to talk to us about the statistics in clothes. Um, what's in at the moment? 
Um, in this area, basically, it's mostly a quite a young environment for the sort of 15 to 25 year olds. You've got a lot of surfwear shops, you've got a lot of trainer shops, um, quite cool, young, trendy, funky clothing. So, so, so clearly, I mean, I'm looking around and I'm thinking, well, you're not uh, like surfwear and, and No, and that we're sort very of... far from it. We're, very, we're a bit more upper market, um, more designer orientated. Up here, we've got these uh, lovely coloured tops and uh, you've got four of these. Are these all the same size? No, they're not the same size. We actually have uh, one of each size, an 8, a 10, a 12 and a 14. We do actually buy more in certain sizes um, than we have out. Right, so, so um, have you got more of these? Will you have more of these in your back room somewhere? Uh, we probably wouldn't have any more size 8s, but we would have another size 10 and another size 12. We order quite a small amount because we are obviously a small boutique. We use a size ratio of a one, two, two, one. So one size eight, two size tens, two size twelves, and one one fourteen. Um, a larger company will use the same ratio, but each each ratio will be relevant to maybe three hundred units. You might want to cover size ratios with older or more advanced students, but right now, Stuart Hill at Viner School is going to use closed sizes to introduce the medium, having just covered the mode. If you were going to go and buy, say, a pair of trousers, okay, you're going to go and buy a pair of trousers at this shop, what would you look for when you were going in to buy your pair of trousers? What would you be interested in, do you think? The colour. Right, certainly the colour. But if you, were, if you knew what colour and the style you wanted, what would you be interested in knowing if you were going to go and buy a pair of trousers? The length. And? Waist. Waist size. I think fashion is a good hook for the topic. I think it's maybe relevant. It's, re it's relevant to all the pupils. I think the girls maybe are more into the, the fashion side of things than the boys. But I think it got them interested. It gives them a context and it gives them focus. And that's at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Now, you all, some of you will have the same waist size, okay? So they know about waist sizes. If we can get the lads to stand up, please, okay? Girls, what do you notice about all the lads there? If, so let's say they've all got the same waist size. Okay, they've all got the same waist. Would they all go and buy the same pair of trousers? If we measured loads of the lads, okay, you would probably find, depending on how accurately you did it, that they've all got different sized legs. Because we talked about fashion and colours, and I'm into stuff like that. But if it was about numbers and stuff, it would really bore me, and I wouldn't enjoy it. I want the lads to come up to the front of the classroom, please, and we're going to try and work out if we can. Well, the girls are going to hopefully going to tell us how to find. Average. So just stand in a line. From there, can we find out an average value or what might be a better way of lining them up? Taking leg measurements is not advisable in the classroom, so Stuart chooses overall height instead. If you put the boys in height order, then you can see like who's between the tallest and the shortest and then that would be the average. Fantastic. Well done, OK. So we need to get you into height order. Okay, so who's the shortest? <coughs> Good lad, come down the end here. See if the rest of you can order yourselves into height order, guys, okay? So we've got the tallest there, yeah. Where do you think you are then? I think you're a bit taller. Are we happy with that, girls? Yeah. Right, so we've got the guys now in height order. Now we've got from the shortest to the tallest. So, I'm going to come back to you now and say which one would you pick as the average and why? Stuart is using the word average before he goes on to explain that median is one of three averages. Um, I think the average boy would be Chris because Sam and Callum are both the tallest out of them and Alfie and Charlie are both the shortest and Chris is in the middle. OK, well done. So we're picking the person that's in the middle. So what I'm going to do is we can take one off the short end and one off the tall end, can't we, until we're left with the guy in the middle. So we're going to take you two away. Okay, so we're left with three now. And then I'm going to take you two away. And we're left with Chris in the middle. And you, for this class, are the average height boy. Okay? Right, guys, we need to stand back up and go back over there. So now, we've got the same situation as we had a minute ago. I'm going to join the queue. I'm going to come right down the end because I'm taller. So I come on this end, okay? Now, we're going to do the same again. This time, what happens when we get to the middle? Okay? So we need one off the short end and one off the tall end. So I'm going to walk away and you're going to walk away. and go and sit down now. Okay? 
Let me do the same again, so we'll take you two guys off. Okay, and you can go and sit down. Okay. Hmm. I can't take both in the way, I've got no one left. So <coughs> what are we going to do then? We've got two people left in the middle now. Okay, we can certainly measure both of their heights. So what can we maybe do with those two figures then to come up with our average now? Because we don't want two averages, we want one average. Let's say then, we're going to measure you, okay, and we'll call you about 1.48 metres. And you're just a couple of centimetres taller, you're 1.50 <laughs> metres, okay? So we don't need you now, guys, so you can go and sit down again, thank you. So what am I going to do for my average? Where do you think I should go with 1.48 and 1.50? What could I do to have an estimate of my average? 1.49 metres. Why did you go for 1.49? It, it, it's in, in the middle of 1.48 and 1.50. Right, it's right in the middle of 1.48 and 1.50 or 1.50. That's the exact method that you use. Well done. And does anybody know that is now what we call the middle value. We put the things in order and we pick the middle value. Does anybody know the posh mass word for that? You think you know it? The median. Excellent. The median. Well remembered. And the median then is the middle value, providing you put them in order, which was the important thing we did with the boys, wasn't it? We had to put them in height order first. Okay. Having arrived at the median height, you could discuss how this value might influence the sizes of clothes that a shop might stock. The distribution of heights should also be considered. Stuart went on to demonstrate how the median can be chosen from a data set containing an odd number of items. We now join him as he considers an even number of items in a data set. This time though there are 10 points. Last time there were 9, which is an odd number. This time 10, an even number. So they're all jumbled up and I can put them into order. This time one off this side, one off this side, one off this side, one off this side, and keep going. Now I can't go any further than that, can I? Because I get left with two numbers in the middle. So what do you think the median number is in this case? 37.5. 37.5, explain to me why. Because it's halfway between 37 and 38. Good girl, well done. So halfway between 37 and 38 is 37.5, and that would be my median in this case, because that is the middle number. Would you do mode, median, and mean with this group? Um, the fact that I only did mode and the median, and not the mean during that lesson, um, is because it was an introduction lesson, and trying to do the mean and make it relevant to them. Uh, I think I found would have been difficult in that lesson. Um, the lesson lent itself to the mode initially because of the data that I was using. And then it led quite nicely on to introducing the median and then thinking about those two. And I think pushing them onto the mean and why we use the mean would have been too much for one lesson. But certainly I'll go on and, and think about doing the mean with the next lesson um, as long as I can introduce it again in a relevant context. Well, Laura, I hope we've convinced you that fashion provides a good context for learning about mode, median and mean.